Hey you guys, my name's Jeff. Welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, then welcome back. Today, by the time you get done watching this video, you are gonna have ninja-like reflexes when it comes to not only understanding growth versus value ETFs, but you're actually gonna be able to explain this to your friends and to your family and impress them with your wisdom when it comes to investing concepts. So without further ado, let's get started. So the idea for this video came from a comment that I got under a ETF video that I did just a little while ago. And Kat Z wrote, I own VB2, but I was wondering about why they call VBK a growth ETF. Isn't that what all small caps want to do, which is grow into larger companies? That was my thought process. Good point, and it's, it makes sense that you'd think that any small cap company or small cap ETF has the desire to grow into a big company. So any kind of small cap investment you make is a growth investment. However, investing is not that simple and here's where I'm gonna help you guys. Have you ever gone out and bought eggs at the supermarket and you see you have all these different choices? Well, I noticed that and I went out and I got these eggs. And as you can take a look here, these are kind of fancy eggs. This dozen eggs cost me about nine bucks. Pasture raised eggs from Vital Farms. These are from small family farms, it says. Uh, freedom to forage outdoors year round. And there's a lot of hype on here, let's call it hype. But there are promises that these are very special eggs and they're beautiful artwork, hand drawn, couple of chickens, ethical eggs and uh, made with fresh air and sunshine. So that is why this is expensive. We could say there is high expectation built into these eggs and that's why the price is high. Now let me give you, this would be called a, bro a growth investment, okay? Growth if it were a stock or an ETF. Now here's something simpler. This is a more plain box and this has a dozen eggs. And this one says large brown eggs. It also says no antibiotics, no added hormones. This was a lot cheaper. This was literally half the price. I think this was 450. Now, when I opened up these eggs, and by the way, there are no eggs in here. I took them out so I would not drop them while I was explaining this to you, but uh, I do have a lot of just random eggs lying around in my fridge, which is potentially a hazard. But these are the things I do for you guys. So if I were to make you guys uh, scrambled eggs or an omelet, I don't know, and I wonder whether you think you could tell the difference between these eggs, which were just brown eggs with all the hype, or these brown eggs, which don't have as much hype. Could you tell $9 eggs from 450 eggs? So that's kind of what we're dealing with when we talk about investing in growth versus value. One of them has a flashier, um, promise and hype and a little bit more kind of bling to it. And these are companies just for example, like Airbnb or Uber or a lot of these fast growing tech companies where there's this promise of growth in the future. And then value companies tend to be a little bit more plain Jane and boring. A lot of the financial companies like say JP Morgan uh, Chase, the bank or Berkshire Hathaway, those are considered more value investments. They are not necessarily companies that are looking to you know, grow two times or three times or four times in the next few years, where a lot of growth investments do promise, or they don't really promise, but there's a suggestion that if you buy this stock, your money's gonna grow much faster. So let me give you a couple examples here um, of growth versus value. You know how there are blue jeans. Sometimes jeans are selling for like $300 for a pair of jeans. And you could also get jeans that are like 50 bucks. So the $50 jeans would be more like a value. Another word for that would be a discount or a bargain. Whereas growth is more like the high fashion stuff where you're gonna pay $300 for a pair of jeans. And some people could say, yeah, but the 300 jeans are much nicer, they have better you know, cosmetics, better attention to detail, nicer stitching. But you know, again, 
These are ways we classify things. Uh, if you've ever heard of Montclair, they make down jackets, puffy down jackets, and they're really like high fashion. If you wear a Montclair jacket and somebody in the know sees you wearing it, they'll give you a lot of respect because that jacket costs between a thousand and two thousand bucks. The most expensive Montclair jackets are like three thousand nine hundred dollars for a puffy down jacket. And then there are jackets you can get. I got a really cool jacket on Amazon for less than a hundred bucks. It's waterproof, it's super warm, so I would consider that hundred dollar jacket to be a value. It's a bargain, especially if you compare it to something expensive. So that's how stocks work. And getting back to the question that Kat Z posed, isn't VBK a growth ETF? It's a Vanguard ETF. Isn't it kind of the same as VB because they're both small cap ETFs? And I will say no, but I want to clarify because I think this is a good moment, a good teaching and learning experience for you guys. So when, you, when these companies create ETFs, they have this huge universe of stocks to choose from, from which to make these ETFs. So let's just call the small cap stock universe like 7,000 different stocks. So you can either invest in all of them, which is actually what VB does. They invest in the whole universe of small cap stocks, but then they also divide them, okay, into two groups, all right? Because like we said with the uh, egg example, companies like to organize things and these ETF companies like to take the stocks and put them into little containers. So they put all of the value stocks into this container and they call this VBR. And then they put all the growth stocks into this container and they call this one VBK. This one is Vanguard's small cap growth. This is Vanguard's small cap value, okay? And they charge you an expense ratio in order for this convenience so that you can buy all these stocks together in these packages. These are like your ETFs. What we've seen during the last year is that a lot of the growth stocks that were very hot, that were growing like two times, three times or more in price over the last couple of years have really been hammered because it's kind of like the prices went high, 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 and then they crashed back down. And these stocks here hadn't gone up so high because you know there wasn't a lot of high prices being paid for them because their value, right? They're bargains. So what you had here, if you look at say the last one year of stock price performance, is that VBR's performance was actually really good and th this did not fall nearly as much as VBK, which actually lost a lot more money because the prices initially were really high, okay? VBR, the value, okay, value ETF, Vanguard's value ETF. It says it's the small cap value, but I wanna tell you, don't trust the names of these ETFs because they're not entirely accurate. Now, Vanguard's small cap value actually invests in both value and a mixture with growth, which is called blend. So if you want to think of it this way, you know, value is like vanilla ice cream and growth is like chocolate and blend is like the swirl. It's kind of in the middle. It's got some of each. Now, VBR has 26% of its portfolio in small cap value and 27% in blend. And VBR for, for value is not really accurate. I think it's more of a value uh, blend ETF. And VBK calls itself growth, but 28% of it is in blend or swirl, and 27% is in growth. So what we have here is really a portfolio which with the value portfolio is a blend with a weight towards value, and the growth portfolio is a blend with a weight towards growth. But if you really want value, and I'm gonna talk about this more in a future video, there are other ETFs that allow you to buy mainly, 
a much higher percentage of the investment in actual value stocks. And I think for a real, for the kind of investor who wants to be very specific in the kind of exposure they get, you will want to pay attention to the actual number of, or percent. You want to look at the data and get the ETF that gives you what you want. So growth is not always good when it means you pay too high a price. So anybody who has bought stock and seen the price come down 30% or 40% or 50% or more is going to recognize, and this video perhaps will help you see why, the price was too high and the expectation was too rosy that the future was going to be incredible for these companies. And now the prices have come back down to earth. And are, around the same time, the value stocks are the ones that were the cheap stocks because people did not expect as much. They had more modest expectations for what these companies would deliver. So when you invest in value ETFs versus growth, while they may all be small cap ETFs, the value ones are going to be cheaper in general, what you will pay in the price for those stocks in the portfolio compared to the growth ETFs. And what I'm going to be doing in a future video is talking about a few of these. One that I've been looking at recently is called AVUV. And this particular ETF, I believe, does a better job in investing in mainly the value portion of the small cap universe. So the average price paid for those stocks is actually much lower than even with VBR, the Vanguard small cap value. And I think that by teaching you a little bit about AVUV, you will get a better idea of what it really means to look at the data and look carefully at how an ETF is constructed. So, hope this info has been useful to you. Uh, this is stuff that I think um, has not been explained, at least in videos that I've seen. Sometimes the explanations get very technical and kind of fancy and hard to follow. But as a beginning investor, or even if you've been doing this for a while, I think just keeping in mind that value and growth are uh, both very valid ways to invest, but understanding the difference between paying high price for stuff and paying a low price for value is going to help you to be a better investor. Because in general, you really want to avoid overpaying for a future that is uncertain. And that's the challenge for all of us. For example, if you're looking at a growth stock like Airbnb, you want to own part of a company, for example, that might grow a lot in the future. But how much do you pay for that potential growth? About a year ago, Airbnb stock was selling for like $200 a share. And a lot of people obviously bought it for $200 a share. This year, it's selling right now, as of December 2022, for about $100 a share. So everyone who bought this stock for the promise of this hyper growth a year ago was paying twice as much as somebody buying the shares today. And all of investing is about this very concept, this very problem of how much do you pay for the promise of money that you're going to earn in the future. And value investors try as hard as they can to pay a very low price for future earnings. And sometimes growth investors are willing to pay a lot more money or a higher price for the promise of growth in the future. Hit like if you like this video. Do not forget to subscribe, and then you will get more targeted content on investing wisdom in the future. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.